This is the Red All Over Instant Reaction Show, sponsored by footyprint.com, with me, Joe Beardsall, Josh Atherton, Alan Smith, and Andy Simcox. Um, Pre warning, we're not sure how Andy's internet's going to hold up because he's already dropped out because he says uh, he's over in Lancashire, aren't you, Andy? Is that where you are today? I don't know what they're doing there, like. What's happening? A, a day visit to Lancashire. I, well, you know, I, try, right. I, I tried, I tried, but you know. That's a sackable offence, pal, that. <laughs> It's not a life lifestyle choice for me, I know that, but, you know, it, it'll be where it'll be. <laughs> right, so Barnsley have just nervously beaten Luton 2-1 away. We thought it was going to be nice and easy when Daryl DK stepped up to take a penalty at 2-0. They went down, well, he missed it, they went down the other end and scored, and it weren't as uh, easy as we thought, but this, they've done us, they've seen us of at line. Um, Andy, you, for once, didn't predict 2-1 and it ended up 2-1, so uh, there you go, pal. You said it was going to happen, it did. Um, Josh, I'll come to you, mate, first for his likes and subscriber target. We need to start getting a bit more serious with this now because uh, we haven't done a dare in a few weeks and we've noticed that it's dipped up a bit. So we need your help, Reds. We need your help. Get it back up because Alan cries all neat if, you don't, if we don't hit targets. We've been roaring, honestly. A box of tissues, it's cost me. Go on, Josh. What, what are we thinking, pal, for this one? A good win. A good win against a tough Luton side. Got to be 125 likes, hasn't it? We at least another 20 subscribers on top. Yeah, hopefully that should be. Come on, come on, Reds. We know you can do it for as help as that. And uh, we'll try and if you want to put a dare in, stick a dare in chat and we'll see which ones we can do for you. So if you want to dare, just put his name. So tell us which one it is you want us to dare. What I mean is just say Alan. And then because <laughs> when I asked about if we should reintroduce dares, Alan just went, no. <laughs> so we've done sure our bits, Alan. Alan, haven't we? We've done our bits. Go on, Al. Oh, we've done a couple, Alan. Yeah. Start at Youngen's for, for next to Nala, I think, but, you know. You're missing a tumble down, Ted, are you? Yeah. So tell us tell us what you want us to do, Reds, whether it's dress up as... Well, we've done dress up as Flash, we've done Bumblebee and Muppets, whatever you fancy, just tell us what you want us to do. We all you want to do it, and we'll uh, we'll make it as air for you if we get 125 likes and another 20 subscribers. Uh, Andy, I'll come to you first, pal. That in it, it's typical Reds, isn't it? We think it's going to be nice and easy afternoon when we when we... Daryl stepping up to get his hat trick and uh, then he hits it straight at keeper and they go and score. Collins, as usual, our best mate who always loves to score past us and, you know, made it a nervous end. Yeah, me, Joe, I'm like a soothsayer. I, can, I, I seem to be able to predict the future. There's something wrong here. When he stepped, when he stepped up, you know, I, I, obviously we've come for there and we, I'm watching with Jonathan and it's 1-0 and, and I'm all right with that. Then it's 2-0, and he's saying, ah, you can't win now. I didn't care because we're winning 2-0, and that's what I want. When it penalty, I thought, that's it. I can now relax for a bit and have a cup of coffee, and we can take it nice and easy. Not only does he save Daryl's penalty, he saves Ellick's follow-up and all. And then straight up, 2-1. Two, one. two for, You know, we caught napping again. 2-1, and it's it's my proper score. Just because I did it's for a second time. And you, you, you three, you're talked me into not going to one. You're talked me into it for the first, the we second time us. again. I've not gone to one, and again it finishes up to one. Your, your three, you should hold your heads in shame, making me do that, talking me into that, giving it some uh, to one, to one. You should to sh hold your heads. I'm disgusted with three of you, mate. You I need to get your influencer shirt top. back out. Get that Hawaiian shirt back out, Alan. Stick to your guns. Don't listen to us. I'm not going to now. That, that's that's it now. I've sorted out for season now. You're wrong. I stay over in Lancashire, sleepy job, Andy. And because we've come out to Lancashire, for that, I've put this on thinking there's no way they're going to wear white shirts. No way on earth. Bring this with me because this is the shirt they'll wear. So every, everywhere I look, somebody's trying to do me down, Joe. I'll tell you, they're trying to do me down. I'm going to make you feel so much better now, mate. I'm going to, and probably all y'all as well. I'm going to make you feel better here. So 2 0, right? Daryl's missed penalty, Annie. They're on the way up other end. Guess what Big Kev says? Well, well he's predicted 2 0, Annie. So he goes, oh, ah, yeah, well. he's missed that penalty for me, so I can get me 2 0. James Collins, bang, 2 1. There you go. So that makes you feel better, mate. Not three I'll points. I tell you, Kev. <laughs> Dr. Doolally is a wrong one. He's an absolute, he should hold his head in shame. Cheering a missed penalty for Barnes like that. Should hold his head in shame. So in that respect, I, I wish they'd have put, put the second, the first goal, their goal in with last kick at match just to do him down even more. But you know, <laughs> yeah, two well, one. What we won, didn't we? Josh, uh, we one of them days where when we're in playoff race, Reading winning as well, Bournemouth winning the two sides that we said other week we're competing with. But I think the biggest tech from today, 
is the fact that we've pulled in maybe Swansea who lost. Uh, I think they lost anyway. 95th minute when mm-hmm. I checked Swansea who lost. Yes, Brentford obviously just above us. Suddenly it's gone from being a, a three teams playing for two places to potentially all four of us fighting it out for, for four places. Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, uh, we would rather have points on the board as well because I know Swansea have got a game in hand over us, but obviously they've got they've still got to win it, still got to go and prove themselves, and they've they've lost three in a row now. So they've really they've really come back into this this battle for the like lo- lower half of the playoffs. And I think the more teams in it, the be- the better it is for us, obviously, because it just drags more and more teams into it whilst we keep going. Uh, we seem to keep it in higher and higher heights at the minute. So I think I think it's, de- it's definitely a good thing for us, bringing more teams into it. We're used to this anyway, dra- dra- trying to drag another team into relegation, but, but also uh, it's nice to do it in top half at table for a change. Feels well, I'd have to check, game. Joe. I'd have to check, but I think, I think Reading and Watford are playing each other on Friday night, I think. Uh, yeah, I think. I'm sure we can. I'll check that while I'm, I'm asking out. So let's just talk about the performance then. Uh, that 2-1 win. Um Al, we know Luton are no mugs. They're a good team uh, and they've proven it this season by already pretty much securing safety. I know we've gone above and beyond that, but um, never were going to be an easy trip, were it? It wasn't. As I said, I, I was going to go for a draw and I went 2-0. Uh, but we held that high line very well this afternoon, didn't we? It, it really caught them out and, and the pressing were good. Uh, Corley had a good game, uh, two assists uh, as well. Uh, came back well after not not such a good game the other day on Saturday uh, and got a very good Friday. But all in all, d- decent. But that last five, ten minutes, nail-biting again. We never do it easy, do we? We never do it easy. It, 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 would be, it would be Barnsley if we weren't biting his fingernails and thinking, blow that whistle, referee. Come on, blow that whistle. But we've broken a record today. Six away wins on the bounce, the first time in our history since 1887. So, applause to the lads for doing that, for going in record books. Unbelievable season. Just absolutely incredible, isn't it, lads? And still got to pinch ourselves a little bit. Andy, I think today is more significant than we actually think. Because you mentioned, I've just checked, Watford are playing Reading on Friday. There's, there's a few teams up there they have got to play each other yet. And this win today... I still think it's going to be 75 points, mate, to get in. I think that is going to be the well, benchmark. So that's two wins it's and a draw. a big draw. thing. We aren't looking, looking at it again. I, I think Reading, with, with their last six matches, have got to play something like five teams out of the top eight, something like that. I think they've got to play six out of eight and we were one room. So I think I think they've got to play five out of their six. I think it's something like five matches in the la- that, that are in the top eight currently. So they're not, you know, they're not all going to win. It, you know, they won, Bournemouth won. It was absolutely critical that, that that we won. Absolutely critical. It's one game less, and we've pulled up on, on, on other people. Like you say, Reading and Watford can't both win. So, you know. I want to mention him, Josh. I, I, you know, we've done all thing, but Daryl DK, I know Woodrow, Woodrow's had a great game today as well. I'm going to do Man of Match in a bit. But again, seven goals for Barnsley since he joined. He's just been unbelievable and just... It was a great moment when, when he scores his first goal. He gets the ball, Woodrow's pass, and we're all going, DK smash, DK smash, and he just smashes it. Brilliant. We went absolutely mental in our house. It's just amazing. It's just so yeah, amazing. especially especially against uh, a very physical and strong defender as well in uh, Matty Pearson. And he just he just bullied him. and made him look, He just looked like a child. And at the end of the day, Matty Pearson, for the first goal in particular, he tried to play the man instead of the ball. Like he just tried to out muscle DK and he just got nowhere. And it, I think it's just testament to how strong and athletic he actually is. But I think on reflection of that game, I think my only one gripe with our performance as a whole is why on earth were so many of our players on edge at box for that penalty? Because I do think in second half, we did start to queue up a bit to have shots and try and score. Because to be fair, we're creating opportunities at will. And I think the amount of players on edge at box last 10 minutes, I thought just like if DK scores, fair enough, it doesn't matter. But if you don't, you, you've got a lot of players now out, out of position. Like I get that Elik did get on end of um, the rebound, but he's not scored and now he's out of position. And now we're, let, now, now we're short at back and we've not got a big, powerful defender at back like him. And for me, it was just, it was just something that was so simple to avoid because chances are, 
if it does come out to a rebound, it's probably going to fall to DK's path and like just in a lower averages and percentages. And if not, keep us different around post. There's no point in anyone being up there anyway for a second opportunity. And it would just something that it just it really annoyed me, especially when we conceded from it, because it would just there was no need for us to have. I think there were about seven or eight players on edge at box following it in. We're two 0 up. We're cruising. And now we've gone from potentially 3 three nil up to 2-1 two, two, down and trying his best in the last 10 minutes to keep him out. It, would just, it just seemed a bit silly. I have to admit, though, I'll, have, I'm, I'll see where Josh is coming from. I'd have put my house on DK Berry and that with two goals, absolutely on fire. But, you know, one of them, isn't it? Um, I, I'm more annoyed at the fact that when they were coming back, nobody pulled pulled one of their lads down, you know, cynical yellow card. Just take the yellow, take the yellow. Mm-hmm. They're, they're counting on us. You know Collins is going to get it. Before he, he got it, I think it might have been, I can't remember it where, it might have been Civic or one of others, but they had a chance to just pull their lad down, you know, take yellow card. If it were Apple Alm, he would have done it, but <laughs> um, but they didn't do it. And, and then obviously they've gone and scored. Mm. I think you're right. I think uh, it was one of them where just stop him, just stop him going mm-hmm. forward. And especially in the last, because it just meant that last 10 minutes, more or less unbearable because I think that's apart from Reading, which were a pretty much play of six pointer, that's probably the most nervous I've been in easily this year as a Barnsley fan. And it would just it just no need, just do something. Don't they're don't just doing it on purpose, Josh. Yeah, it's just, it's Josh, just gonna, Josh, Joe, Andy. DK should have done an Andy Simcox special and thrashed it. Don't you, Andy? He should have thrashed it. If goalie had got it way, like he did, put him it net way to know. If he just lash the flipping thing, just smack it. You know, at that time, you don't need any of these placements bits here, here, just off at floor so he can save it. Just lash the damn thing. Then he can't, he he can't like he save it. Off, or yeah. Should have yeah. yeah. Credit to Luton, though. I thought they stuck in there. I thought they the usual thing you expect from Luton, even though I thought we had a bit more quality on there. They... They gave us a game towards end. They were they were looking like they could do it. Um, so yeah, I think it's really good. Um, lads, let's do a quick points count, and you guys can join me as well. Tell us what you think. What are you reckoning then? What's the, the the least we're going to need for playoffs this season? Nah, now nah, because I suppose Reading and Bournemouth have kept up with us and six games to go. I'm still going. I'm sticking to my guns. I think seventy five is going to do us, which is two wins and a draw. I still think that's enough. Andy. Uh, um, six. I, I think we need to win three of them. I think if we, be, it, it's difficult. We aren't looking at. We've got to. If we win three, I don't think we, we're ready in playing against other clubs and what have you. And I, I, I can't up at top of me, top of me. I remember who Bournemouth are playing. I think they've got a mixed bag. We've got on paper the easiest because teams that we're playing down the bottom are down the bottom for a reason. But as Josh has said before, they've got something to play for when they're down bottom. But at least if we're playing teams down the bottom and we don't come away with a win, or if we lose a match, then it's not like a six-pointer, if you like, until last match at sea. There's no six-pointers, so we we won't lose as much ground as we could do if we were playing all the teams at the top and B and losing two or more. So um, I, I think it still needs three wins from six, which I think we're capable of doing. But, you know, there's some, there's some difficult games, you know, some difficult games in there. Coming up of it next number of weeks, it's not going to be easy at all for us. Alan, are you with Andy or are you with me? I'm saying two wins in a draw will do us, but... I'm just looking at league table now. Brentford's played 38 on 69. Swansea's played 39 on 69. We've played 40 on 68. Reading's played 40 on 66. Bournemouth, 39, 65. And then we've got a 10-point cushion on Cardiff, played 39 on 58. And Millwall... Also 40 58, and who we play on Saturday Borough 40 57. So, looking at that, you know, you'll be looking at seven points for us, which you said they get that 75 to give us a good chance of still being in there, Joe. Josh, do you think 75? You, you already said last week that we, we're going to beat Preston and Norwich anyway, so that's another six points. <laughs> so, I reckon you'll be fairly confident after today, mate. I, I I don't think it's just it's Reading it's Reading who I think we're in a direct fight with because if Bournemouth win their game in hand their goal difference is far superior it's worth a point for them so that puts them in it I mean they've still got to win that game in hand and I just think I just think they've got the quality to see in Sun's top six so for me it's sort of between us and Reading for this last spot or to find a place in playoffs and just looking at their games they've got Watford 
Swansea, Cardiff's not going to be easy. Um, Norwich will probably want league by the time they play them. And then they've got Huddersfield on last day who might not be safe by that point. So that they still might have something to play for. They're just... And there's loot that there's looting in the middle of that as well. Like it's not an easy running for them at all. But I do think if I think if they do win them last six games or they get a fair portion of points from that, then they probably do deserve to finish in top six at some point. I do it's gonna be harsh on whichever team don't make it with the gap between us now, like the playoff race and uh, eighth. It's gonna be harsh on whoever finishes seventh. But I don't think 75, I think 75 will 100 percent see us in top. Six. I, I think you could scrape for on seventy three or seventy two, because I'm not. It was sixty nine sure. last year, weren't it? Mm, and I'm do you know what? Sure. I do wonder if it's going to be. You know what football's like. It's a weird old game. I wonder if Swansea, where, where they're going at minute, they might pick up because they're a good team. But where they're going at minute, I wonder if it's going to be rules reverse. Last year they beat Pitt Forest on last eight season. I'm starting to think they might be ones that could potentially slip out because I think Reading look good against us. I think we're looking good, and I think Bournemouth look good now. Mm, I think you. I think you'll be right. They could be on a, a bit, a bit of a slide at the minute. It's it's tough to try and switch that momentum sometimes. Like as soon as you lose a few on a bounce, it's it's difficult. I mean, look at us last season. Lost about fifteen games in a row with no reply, and uh, it's it's a it's a bad habit to get into. I think. And but like 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 you've just said though, they've got a lot of quality within within that side, and you, you'd kind of expect them to be able to sort sort out between them the players, but. They're losing a lot of games, which you'd kind of you you just expect them to pick points up at least when they've been losing them instead. So they've uh, they're, they're certainly on a big wobble at the minute. But I do think seventy two will probably see us in it. Wow, seventy two that is low. Come on, Reds, what do you think? I'm going seventy five. I think seventy two, Josh. <laughs> That's one win, mate, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be in it next uh, week. What, Smithy? We're not going down, Smithy. That's 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 done now, Smithy. We can't get relegated. You should be happy. Oh, is that official? official? Jim Cox, come on. <laughs> is that official now? Can we confirm it? I thought we confirmed this a few weeks ago. Well, yeah, but you know, there we go. I just want Alan to know because you know I, I want to make him happy. Oh yeah, he's team, happy. let's see him. I want him to be happy. Uh, well, it can go. all change, can't it, Joe? You know, we, yeah. on on Saturday, you know, if we if if we beat if we beat Middlesbrough. And Reading lose against Watford, then they're on the way. They're on the way out, and we can relax a lot more. But obviously, if we lose against Warnock's um, Middlesbrough and they win, it changes completely. It changes. It, it can all it next on well Friday and Saturday could be a, a pivotal time, really pivotal time for for the you know for, for both Barnsley and Reading. So you know, let, let's hope it, we come out on top of it. We'll, we'll see. Andy, who's turning up on Saturday at Oakwell? Is it Colin or is it Neil? <laughs> Colin. <laughs> Colin. Uh, <laughs> um, right, Reds. Uh, we're going to do our man of the match, but let's get the fan come on. Uh, we're going to chuck Big Kev in this as well, uh, just so he can do his prediction. Uh, we're going to do uh, Middlesbrough after that as well. So if you want to put your predictions on for our prediction competition, um, just basically you comment your prediction for Middlesbrough at home this Saturday because this is going to be the only show this week. Uh, just got a busy week, so just going to do one this week. Um, put your prediction in there and you will be tracked by Andy. Um, and yeah, here is our fan cam and Big Kev's prediction as well. I called it straight down middle. I said it's going to be 2-1 Barnsley and I was right. It was 2-1 Barnsley. We got the three points. 68 points on the board now for them Reds. Cracking performance uh, today by Barnsley. Gutted that Daryl DK didn't get his um, get his hat trick for, for us. He got two goals. Beautiful uh, assist by Woodrow as well. Uh, he got he got his two goals. Gutted for him. He didn't get his third. It was a poor penalty for me. For me, he should have just whacked it and up for up for best. But he. Um, he just uh, he went for place, but we hung on. I think we're getting to the stage of season now where we need to be starting with the strongest eleven, rather than letting them come off bench and hoping they can change things. For me, Carlton Morris, the best strike we've got at the club, that's permanently our player. He should be starting every game. Adi Baezio, you 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 can't warrant. Morris being up bench and starting at Adebayo. DK, what can you say? He's proved his human. 
with the penalty miss. I don't know how their players stayed on the pitch because for me, clear red card. But we need to be doing everything we can do to keep him. Sell the town hall, sell the Metrodome, anything. DK has got to stay a red. Right then, Big Kev. A uh, 2 1 win for Barnsley away at Luton. The minute, uh, well, I mean, they kept us on his toes, didn't they? The minute nervous for us, last 10 minutes uh, after Dow missed that penalty. What did you think to today's performance? Well, we, to be honest, we start, uh, in the first half, I think that we played long ball like them. We kept kicking it up. Once we started to play football, we looked a lot better. And, and uh, shame about DK. DK should have smashed that into the back at net. He, what's he doing side footing him when he's got a shot that'll kill goalie? <laughs> I mean, he, should have, he should have put goalie, ball, and flipping all the rest of, you know, all their team it back at net, not just, you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know what he was doing. He deserved an hat trick and he should have got one, but to end of the day, you've got to smash it in, haven't you? That's it, he should have smashed it. I think we all know that, I'm sure he knows that. Uh, but another three points for the Reds. Uh, drags in a couple of teams above us as well, with Swansea losing, and Brentford's still got a game in hand, but uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. Um, Who's his guinea pig for today's prediction? This one's crunchy. They're crunchy? All, have you noticed they're named after certain uh, certain things? Your favourite chocolates? We've got curly whirly, crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> right, so what does crunchy, or yourself, whichever is who's predicting today, think to Barnsley well, versus Middlesbrough at I, home? I can't get them right. I mean, I went 2-1, I went and we, we should have won 2-1 when it were one apiece. I mean, that were a goal, definitely. I went 2-0 today, and then what the, the other goal had him going up field and going to score. So... Uh, it's going to be a tight game. It's always tight with them. I'm just, I'm going to go with a 1-1 one, one draw. I mean, I'm, you know what I mean? End of the day, it is what it is. A 1-1 one, one draw? Yeah. Is that good enough for Barnsley as we go into well, the last six? I want us to win 2-1. But if I go 2-1, it'll be 1-1. One, one. So <laughs> I'm, I'm having a bad run at the minute. So. so you're sacrificing your predictions with the hope that we win. I like it. That's all right. Yeah. So that's the fan cam. Thank you for entering and uh, sending us your... Videos, a usual thing. If you want to uh, get on a Red All Overs fan cam, all you've got to do is tweet us a video. Um, you can send it private message on uh, Red All Overs Facebook, Red All Over BFC, or you can send it on um, WeTransfer, if you like, which is josephbeardsall at gmail.com. So send us it and we'll try and use you on our fan cam. Um, right, Andy, do you want to just tell us how we're doing in prediction competition? Because I think you said we had about 14 people who predicted today's 2-1 win. So that's a... Decent I, I, haven't done, I haven't done the table yet, so you know you, you, you got we've come str we've come straight to doing it. So I've got to be able to look at it. I can't I can't log on to do this and log on to put that right. But there's 14 people that have got two one, two one. So you know, Kev's not one room. Bless him, bless him. Right, Johnny Moore, he got two one. Johnny Moore, bless him. Bailey Allen got two one. So did Jed Taylor. So did Lewis R. So did. Tom, Gareth Lane, Darren Swift, bless him. Uh, J. Rob Six, he does well. Is he done two Swift, one? Done two one. Uh. That's six Jason, points for him then, because he, he got uh, saved. Uh, yeah, Jordan, uh, well done, Jordan. Jason Smith's doing well. He got it. Brian Uscroft, he's he's doing well and all. He's got two one. So did Philip Taylor, Tina Tyke, Toby Tyke. What's it type? Marin, he got to, he got it two one. He's played a blinder and all. John Sherburn and not la last but not least, as far as I've looked at a quick glance, Matthew Carr. All done good. All I done think good. that I had to laugh. I, I mean, go on, Nanny, what are you gonna say? That don't matter. Don't matter. I was just gonna say I think J Robs and um T Tyke are probably top then, because I think they're both I'm, I'm just so. guessing, but I think they both got six points out of first two. Yeah. I think so. I'd, I'd have to I'd have to if you're talk among yourselves, I'll have a quick look, but you know. Well, yeah, we'll live on. Sense, but I, I need you to give J Rob I'm, some I'm, stick because he's my mate and he's a Man United fan. So Jordan, if you're listening, uh, there you go, mate. <laughs> and he's gonna give some stick. Is he he's a man you fan. Man you disgusting. Is he a man <laughs> man you a man, man you fan? We can't have that. We can't have that. He can't. He can't be winning a prize, on it? Yeah, he shouldn't hate it. Where does Where does he live? Live London, somewhere like that. No, he lives They'll in Barnsley. Live in Manchester, right? will he? Bar he'll not Barnsley live in Manchester. Will. He's born in Barnsley. Well, not live. He'll not live in Manchester if he's a Man United fan, will he? <laughs> <laughs> Dear me, he needs to get his head. There in seventies when we lost the real Andy. He wasn't there in seventies when we lost the real on on a wet Monday night in FA Cup. And I'm. I've, I've been. When I've replied to him 
on 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 you know on YouTube. I've been right kind to him because he sounds sounds all right. I've changed my mind. I'm going to give him some now. When he starts <laughs> predicting, oh no, I didn't know that. I, I thought you know. knew until this Sunday no. and we did the six, you know, the six meet up thing and met up for first time months. And he was saying to me, he says, I got it right the other day, but I didn't want to reveal myself as a Manchester United fan because I know Andy would give me some sticks. I said, right, well, I'm going to tell him because <laughs> I'm a good mate like that. Please tell me he don't play football with you and all. He does that. He that. does that sometimes, yeah. Does Not it? on a Thursday, though. Uh, right. Uh, let's, let's, all move, and all. let's move Did on, all Well done to everybody who predicted uh, the right score. Um, Man of the match. Let's do man of the match quick and then we'll uh, finish with our thoughts for Middlesbrough. Um, Andy, who's your man of the match against Luton? Uh, Mads Anderson. I thought he, uh, apart from one bit, I thought I thought he looked strong in defence and when we needed it. He, he made the, the, the one bit that he didn't do so well, but on the whole, I thought he played, I, I thought he played, he was really strong at the back and uh, no, no messing. I, I, I don't, I'm glad when he gets ball, instead of just messing about with it and you're thinking, please just get rid of it, he has started to just get rid of it. And if he gives a throw in away, he gives a throw in away. I saw Mads for me, he did well today, I thought. I thought a lot of them did, but he did very well at back. Yeah, hard conditions as well. Wind's been really bad the last couple of days, so it weren't easy for, for defenders to get that away. Um, can Josh, can I say you... one thing? Can, well, can I just say one thing? Yeah, I suppose, can yeah, it's a tell... talking show, so you can say one thing. Yeah. Before... These flipping, these lines, referees and lines, this new flipping offside rule. You know, if balls play, if somebody's offside and they're set off after the ball, put your flag up. Put your, don't wait until he touches ball because so many times Collins comes flying out. There could have been all sorts of clashes between the striker and Collins. Somebody could get hurt. So they get to ball, then they put the flag up. As soon as he sets off after the ball, stop this new messing about. Get your flag up. Make it, make it a proper it's game. It's more stupid than... rule ever, isn't it? It's not just that. Like it. If they do kick it upfield and then their player, they get ball, they return an unfair advantage, don't they? Because they get possession then and it's just played on because, you know, I don't really, it's just, just nonsense, that rule. We can talk about it on a further show, but yeah, just nonsense. Um, Josh, who's your right. man at match for today's match? Uh, I think DK and Woodrow, obviously, two goals and uh, two, two assists between them. But for me, Toby Sibic. I thought you were really solid today. I think, uh, especially in the first half, though, uh, one moment in particular stood out for me on right hand side, and he just went and went went in strong and hard, and were brave three or four times in a row. Tough 50-50s, won them all, and then played played the ball out nice. And I think um, I think his passing were a mu- more, much more crisp than what it has been in the last couple of weeks. Last few weeks he looked a bit nervy, but today he looked calm and composed. And I think that is something which. Uh, he does probably the best out of the back three is uh, his distribution. And last couple of weeks, he's looked a bit nervy, but today, very composed. And uh, that's right, he had a solid game, marshalled their front, front line quite well for me. Yeah, I think Civic's coming on. It's just every every game thing he's getting better. I, I actually think, yeah, he's continuing to improve, continuing to um, cut out those mistakes. I, I think he's, he's really looking solid now. Um, I was always a big fan. Of, I am a big fan of Michael Solbauer, but I think that, yeah, Civic's really giving him a run for his money in that position. So well played to Civic. Um, Alan, are you going to go different? Are we going to have all foreigners different? Because I'm not going for Mads and I'm not going for Civic, even though they both played really well. well I thought, uh, for me, player of the season so far for me, uh, Callum Britton had another good game from fullback. Uh, uh, unlucky not to score. He should have uh, had more composure when he hit it. He could have scored his first goal. He had, I think he had a couple of good chances. Uh, but no, we, we, we stormed through and took three of their defenders out in that run. It's got to be big Daryl DK. I mean, for his two goals, forget his penalty miss. But that run, when he took, uh, well, it was unreal. It, <laughs> he just, he just bounced, bounced off him and he got into the box and he did it. Uh, Outside at net, didn't it? He? he could have got his hat trick there. Oh, that'd but, have been a beautiful hat trick oh, if it had scored. What a that. run to take three, three Luton players out. It was like bring him down, Legolas, wasn't it? If you like Lord of the Rings, I'm a bit nerdy, so you you might not get that reference. But uh, yeah, they're just like they're all just around him trying to get it, get get him off ball. It weren't happening. Oh, I could have that, it? The first as well, wasn't it? Pearson tried to pull him down. <laughs> he nearly Pearson was practically on his back. Back and him tugging him. <laughs> Do you know what, Al? The nearest I've seen to Daryl DK is in Rugby Union with New Zealand's Jonah Lomu. When he gets ball, nobody can stop him by fair or foul means. 
just can't stop him like a, like a tank. He's a steam train, isn't he? I think, do you know what the best thing about that run out? What I liked right at the beginning, I think Pearson grabs him a bit. And I think that angers him. And the anger in him made him, <laughs> made him power even more than normal. And I loved it when he won penalty. And he, basically, Pearson makes a good tackle. And Ball just went straight back to him because he's like just such a powerhouse. They <laughs> just weren't getting ball off him. Are you? We're going to have to bring him down. So good to do it in Scott penalty. Um, and we're going to get DK because I thought he played really well and just, yeah, just caused him all sorts of problems. But I'm going to give it to, because he missed that penalty. Sorry, sorry, Daryl, I'm a bit a bit harsh here, you played, meant. Um, I'm going to give it to Carly Woodrow because I just think that the composure today, that pass, and then second one as well to cut inside and, and have a shot. He's, he's created both goals, hasn't he? And yeah, I just thought it was one of them games where it needed a little bit of quality. And I think he just gave us that little bit of quality that then, DK managed to capitalise on by being a powerhouse. So <laughs> so both of them joint. A bit of a joint, I think 50-50, but I'm, I'll just go Woodrow just since nobody else has gone Woodrow to make it fair. So four different men at the match. Yeah, there we go. Uh, write in comments what you think, Reds. If you disagree or agree with us, tell us what you reckon. We like to, we always like to have a chat with you. Um, right, let's finish off the show. Five minutes. Let's do Middlesbrough for Saturday coming up. Uh, get your predictions in, Reds. Uh, foot, um, our prediction competition sponsored by footyprint.com. Check out their stuff. They're personal merchandise lots of stuff mugs all sorts of stuff and uh yeah you can win 50 quid if you win if you get the most points um 20 quid second prize 10 or third and you get some red all over merch as well um andy borough at home what are we uh reckoning to this one as he froze he's in lancashire so he's probably froze he looks like he's froze anyway I'm not going to go to Andy because he's froze. Alan, <laughs> till Andy gets the young'uns off games and he gets his internet back, what do you reckon, pal? I'm just trying to fool you, Joe. <laughs> well, we can't see you, so we're, we're keeping you there. Alan, what do you reckon to Borough? Uh, a tough one, isn't it? Another tough one. I mean, they do one apiece uh, today. Uh, we Watford at lunchtime, didn't they? Uh, but uh, Sam Morsi won't be playing for him, will he? Uh, he's injured. His season's over, so... Sam Morse is not making a return back to work well. Uh, I think we can do it. I think we can get back on home soil and get another victory. Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 to Barnsley. Yeah, it's very sad to see Sam, uh, obviously, injury, and we wish him all the best because uh, great player for us. Shame he couldn't have signed permanently, but... Um... Josh, from a selfish point of view, very glad he's not playing because he's a quality player. Mm. So it'll be a good asset. For, it's good for us that he's not playing. What do you reckon, Are we Is Neil Warnock going to do us on this one? I was nervous about this one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think this is probably as this is his last big test for me because um, you're against a, 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 a very talented Neil Warnock side, to be honest. They've got Yannick Balassi. They've got some real, real quality players in there. And... Um, it's just it's just not going to be a pushover of a game. I mean, they've they've got a very outside chance of making the top six, nine points off off it now with six left, which is going to be be some turn of events if they did. But they've still got a bit of something to play for, so I think it'll be. It's just going to be hard. It's a Neil, it's a Neil Warnock side as well, and uh, I think it'll be a very hard for one all draw. Mm, yeah, uh, do you know what? I'm, I'll just say mine. I'm going to say I'm same as you. I'm going one all. I don't want to sit on fence, but I just feel it. I feel like this is, and I don't think that's the worst result after today because beating Luton, I think we're we're well in there. I think Reading will probably end up getting a draw or losing to Watford, so I don't think that's the worst result of one all draw against Borough. Uh, Andy, what do you reckon, mate? Am I back? Well, you seem I to think... be so crack on. Well, I was just I was just good to stop like that, and you think, oh, he's gone. He's not. I think I think you're a pair of wrong uns. What is wrong with you? Only thing that I'll try. We could finish if we draw one all. We could be outside the playoff positions. So I'm in a bit of a quandary, really, Joe, because my heart tells me to return to me two one. But because I said one nil, we won two one. So it'd be nice to say one nil on the expectation then, but it's that it's two one. But no, 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 two one, a big fat two one. To the Reds. Well, it's no surprise. You Are you sure you don't want to do your reverse psychology thing again, Andy? So it is 2 1. Because every time you say well, it worked, it's worked today. You say it yourself, it's worked today. It won't to work today, Andy. If he just scored his third goal, we'd have scored a penalty and he won't to score that goal. So reverse psychology 2 1. Won't to work there. Mm. You've got to sell us. What did I sell last week? I said on the last show, 
I'll go on 1 0 because we'll finish up. Because I ain't done it, we'll finish up winning 2 1. And we won 2 1. They might, if he'd have scored a penalty, if he hadn't to score all that. It was the fact when, when it when referee blew his whistle, I, I were right. I'm a soothsayer. I'm a so, uh, I yeah. predicted Well, we're out of it. time anyway, Andy. So, uh, right, Reds, we will catch you after the Middlesbrough game. Have a great week. Six historic away wins for the Reds. Can we st- can we get in the playoffs? Of course we can. Come on, you Reds. <laughs>